Howdy, folks. How's everybody doing today? And how has your week been? Good, I hope. I need to be careful I don't twat my tea on the um, magnifying um, light. <laughs> I've done that once already this week. It's in a slightly awkward position there, but it's kind of useful for adding a bit more light when I'm streaming. So, who's with me this evening? Let's see. I was just, I was a bit delayed because I was trying to sort some um, date egg stuff out. Um, which I'll come back to later. Hi Laurie, how are you doing? Oh, crikey. So we'll do a bit of news and then we'll move on to um, tiles, tiles, tiles. Right, news, 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 news. What do we got here? Uh, anything interesting we need? Oh yes. Um, let's do this. This is a bit interesting. So this is new to me. I don't know if it's new to others. Nerve um, from Yosis HQ. Browser up so it needs on to be safe. I hadn't heard of this before. There may have been a rename going on here. I don't think this is the same as. Uh, As Claire's original, I um, can't remember what it's called now. RV32i. I can't remember what she called it. Anyhow, but I noticed this was posted, which is interesting. So I don't know if this is a rework of Pico 32 or not. Do you know about it, Laurie? Is this a rework of Pico V32 or is this something new entirely? Like, just renamed. There's no real explanation of the history. There's a name change, but I don't think I when I look at the um, commit for the name change, they're just changing the people, you know, the email addresses and references in the code, not the name of the project that's changed. But I don't know if this is you know, um, a child or um, derivative of Pico RB32 or not, whether this is completely new.
but this is you know under Yosis HQ nerve N E R V Ah, oh, Laurie's been looking at um, Warren's end margin risk. Okay, interesting. And what do you think? Hazard two. Is that what it, is that what it's called? Oh, this is as in yes. Um, this is the chat. Also does all the did all the, a lot of the um, eco pie stuff as well. Yes, Luke, Luke Wren. Hmm, I haven't looked at this hazard too. Hazard two is a small two stage RV thirty two implementation two stage. Nice. It's written in N Migen, which is kind of cool. Yeah, I'll have to have a look through this line. I haven't had um, I haven't had a chance to look at this. I've not actually heard the name. Oh, and it, it's a smaller brother of Hazard Five, which is a five stage risk. The goal of this project is to build a relatively small and pleasing two stage and to re familiarize myself with their margin. Interesting. What, what kind of look usage does it come if used there? No? sort of dimensions are we talking about here? Are we talking about Pico RV32 type size or the larger or? Runs on an ice stick, so it must be quite small. That's the 1K thing, isn't it? So yeah, must be reasonably small. Compact and Bijou, as they would once have said. Very good. Have a quick um, new ankle sock. <laughs> Great name. Ankle sock. <laughs> oh my. Tell it's Friday, can't you? Hazard 2 Pi. Let's have a quick look if you don't mind me. I've not really looked at any CPU in NMIGEN in any depth. Interesting. Hmm. That way of mapping the um, structures, breaking them down. Hazard to shifter. That includes the shift. It's not um, not a barrel.
Ooh, yes. No, that does look nice. It's actually quite readable as well. I'll tell you what you don't see a lot of. I've noticed a lot of the image and stuff is comments. By golly, I remember my code review from last year. If he took one look at this, he would have um, ripped them a new one. But anyhow, I mean, Python is a bit more explanatory than others. A bit more wordy. Oh, look, there is a comment there. Yeah. <laughs> that just got me thinking about the carries the LUT arrangement because Lattice had a um, their annual uh, what do you call it press day financials etc made me think of that there's a lot of description in the readme. Now I'll have a look. I'm just interested in seeing the code. They're using switches here rather than state machines, which is interesting. A lot of people use switches rather than oh well, he's using the if lf lf oh damn I hate that. Why do that? Why, why not do a K? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It's okay, so let switch. Let's have a look. It's the readme. It's quite compact. I'd like to look into this a bit more at some point when we have some more time. NHBO NHB uses an HB bus ankle sock the tiny sock to support has a two running on the lattice die stick development board 1280 that's yeah it's the smallest sock you can wear in public Oh. oh dear. Uh, currently this contains has a two CPU instance, 4K RAM with an AHB light interface. Remarkable. I need to look at that. I haven't looked at AHB light. That could be a way to go for us. Have you used AHB light at all? know anything about it I know AHB is commonly used in the arm world um, I'm not quite sure what AHB light is but clearly a cut down version and we will need a bus I wonder if that's one way to go spy flash see what it keeps in place uh, one kilobyte direct map cache that's quite good Um, memory map registers for blinking LEDs, toggling a soft rut pin, an AHB light splitter for connecting these components together. Mm. This is really interesting, I. I'm going to have to. Um, I just wish I wasn't so busy with doing the hardware stuff at the moment. I definitely want to look a bit more deeply at this very um, interesting. I particularly want to look at the HBL. I mean if, he's, if he can fit all of that in, what sort of speed does it run, run at? Do you know Laurie? Have you actually run any stuff on it to see, um, see how it runs? Cache is interesting. Oh, that's just a flash cache. Cache. Okay, it's not a general cache. Interesting. Interesting. Hmm. 
Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I like this, Larry. Good find. He's clearly put some good work in here. Uh, I think it says 30 megahertz. Right. Okay. Very interesting. I'm going to dive into that a bit more when I get a bit more time. Looks nice. Yeah, it's good for me too. Oh, excuse me, you're winning. I was trouble with streaming on Friday. I'm usually being exhausted by Friday. It's been a busy week, which it has. I had a good break for yesterday and the day before. Some of the stuff I'm working on. Anyhow, so that's good. Uh, whatever. Is there anything else on my news items? Uh, this was quite good. I watched this. Uh, Crowd Supply now have a. Um, they're doing some videos, and Helen's doing it. She's great. Definitely worth watching. I I'm hoping it's going to become regular. She had. Uh, Fuel Town. Of. Um, or Esden of Icebreaker fame, among other things, Black Magic Probe, Icebreaker, definitely worth a look. And Helen's really bubbly in it as well, so it's quite upbeat. I was quite um, pleasantly surprised. And FPGA Kian has been very, very busy. Look, doing lots more uh, back eye stuff. He's got so many FPGA boards, he just keeps buying them. As soon as he sees a new one, he buys one and has a play of it. He's been working on uh, Bresnum. Uh, line algorithms, but I think I might have mentioned that last time. So yeah, so those are the main ones. This was interesting as well. I really, 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 really thought this was interesting. This is a more electronicsy one. Um. Oh, the video has been removed, Laurie. Okay, I'll have a look in a minute. Maybe it's a different address. The um, this one's quite good. Let me come back round to that. So he's just uh, he's just using TTL to make a shortwave receiver, which is really cool. Which reminds me, I've got to do some SDR stuff when I get chance as well, because you can do all sorts of transmission and reception on FPGAs. But it's just kind of cool. This if you're into the electronic stuff. Um, and as I say, I'd love to do some SDR stuff. Uh, okay, um, let me see. So, uh, yeah. Mm. Um, yes, these are only up for a short period for some reason. I had this problem before. The original link I had, when they said they were going to do it, stopped working, and then they sent me another one. Now, mm, hold on, maybe if we can.
is it um Just check something. Oh yeah, he's um, FPGA Khan's actually doing a clock. Strangely. Um, oh, why can't I see this? Hmm. Teardown series, there we go. Well, it's kind of strange that it requires um, different URL. Sorry, guys. Let's see if we can see a quick bit of Helen. I don't know what Drew's been uh, feeding her. Yeah, she's really bubbly on it. She's great. She has a good laugh too. If only my streams were as entertaining. Anyhow, take a look. It's good fun. Good fun. And I hope they're going to do some more. I think that was the initial one from Crowd Supply. But I may be wrong. Ah, damn it. In fact, let me go back because what I forgot to do. Uh, Let me subscribe, if I remember, then I can find it again next time. Wait, wait a cut and pick a minute. Right, so, uh, I think that was all my bits of noise, uh, noise, news, could be noise, wasn't that much. Anything else that you've seen that you want to just mention at all? Folks, let me know. Otherwise, I will move on to uh, some of the hardware stuff. Oh, I should also definitely should mention this. Silly me. Yeah, silly me. Laurie's been really, really busy, and this is looking good. He's been working on some NMIGEN examples, and in particular, he's working on some camera stuff as well. He's got some basic stuff working, which is fantastic. I'm really pleased about that. Um, I was going to have a look at these at some point and try and work out how portable they can be made between, say, black ice and amalgam or whatever. Or, um, more importantly, um, when we start using the tiles, which I'm going to cover a bit today. But anyhow, yes, Lloyd's been very busy. That's good. So, without further ado, uh, let's move on. Where's my CAD gone? Oh, it's closed. Hold on. So, a few changes. You'll notice straight away. Um, 
me get the windows up so that you guys can see. Turn the browser off. And CD, CD, right. Let me do a little resizing of my windows. Just hold on a few moments if you can. That is zooming out. I'm going to have to adjust this the sizes. The size sucks. So. I don't know why this is all changed anyhow. There we go. So let's look at this first. Oh, what's Larry saying? Yeah, I wanted to make my examples work on multiple boards with better separation of physical interfaces. So yeah, I think um, one of the things I'm going to have to do is do some um, work on the tile stuff so that we can see what that looks like do a first pass on what the board file would look like for um the board i'm going to talk about first here um which i may call black ice five so remember last week we talked about the Black Edge. So Black Edge is obviously the connector uh, standard. <clears throat> um, we were thinking of using that name for the board. So I'm still in two minds about that because it gets a bit confusing between the Black Edge standard and a board. Anyhow, currently the only implementation of a Black Edge um, standard following board is Black Ice MX, which is a combination of a carrier and the ice core the ice core has the black edge connectors on it which connect to the black ice uh, mx carrier so um, what i'm showing here is another carrier for black ice which doesn't want to fit exactly on the screen surprisingly So, um, kind of carrying on from where we were last week. So, this is slightly different from the carrier I showed last week, which was kind of a universal carrier. Um, that idea broke down because getting it to work with the current version of Black Edge and a future version meant some rather bad compromises um so in the end i've just decided to do two different versions so um i, I want to get this one done first and i've just been changing pinouts and stuff and rearranging things but let me just go through the setup uh, in some ways this is easier to do to start with because i need to start getting tiles made and tested and get a board file down and start playing around with it see how it works really important before i do the more complex boards like the amalgam i need to get this stuff done first so this carrier here which i'm calling right now black ice 5 um, will accept effectively 
the ice core in the center here. You can see. Um, then it has one, two, three, four, five tiles. But more importantly, these are all on one side. Because what I was talking about last week is uh, two sides of the carrier being used. Now we will do that when we get to things like the um, ESP5 stuff. But for this one, we don't need to do it. We can get it all on one side, which is actually really convenient in many ways. It makes the uh, layout a bit easier, which is good. I'm all for easier right now. So I need to do some routing on this today. But let me just go through this because <coughs> there's a few um, important parts to this. So literally by if you... If you if you if you get one of these carriers, you will be able to use your existing um, ice core board with this. So you can make it work with tiles. That's that's clearly what this is about. Um, there is some subtlety in here in that the four outer ones are regular mixed signal tiles, whereas the inner one here. Is a bit more special. Um, it's what I call a digital only tile. Um, and there's two reasons for separating these. Um, this is a divergence from standard tile. One of the advantages that you can have with doing this is um, for a lot of things the normal regular mixed signal tiles will do everything you need. That's what it's designed for. That's the common format. But in some cases, you want to do something slightly different. So if we go and look at what it means in terms of a tile, so if we just switch briefly to the schematic so you can see the pins here. Um, so what does a tile look like? So let's look at this one here. So it has eight data lines connected to the FPGA obviously so there's an eight bit wide channel or eight GPIOs whatever way you want to look at that that are connected to the uh, FPGA it also has a set of four pins that can form a serial uh, arrangement in terms of like uh, an SPI for example come back to that in a minute because there are some variations there We've got I squared C in terms of STA and SCL. We've got some extra control lines here. So we've got a reset line, we've got an enable line, uh, which can be used to control things like power, for example. So by having an enable line there, we can take a tile down. So I know I've called it EM for now, but we may later want to call that power slash EN or something, or PEN. Um, we've also got an interrupt which is useful in a bunch of cases so I've added that in as well and then we've actually got three mixed uh, signal pins I know before we were looking at we had two I've changed it to three so I am limiting the number of tiles we can have because the number of analog IOs we've got as well uh, but a very good reasons for that. Having three is sometimes better than two. There are a few examples where you need three rather than two, which is why I've gone for this. And then you have ground and three volt free. In addition, you've obviously got these zero volt clamp downs, um, which go through the screws. Uh, you've also got on your connector, you've got plus V and minus V. Now these are independent supplies. These can be for driving things like motors, for example. So they can actually go really high. I mean, you could take it up to 48 volts or something. If I expect it like that. But you have to be careful because you have to make sure that all your tiles are spec for that, that, that voltage. Or at least any of them that use those higher voltage, higher current lines. Anyhow, it enables you to deliver a lot more power. And if you were to look at the connector itself, what you find is 
the top and the bottoms of the connector have those high voltages they have uh, 12 pins each to carry that so 12 V plus things 12 V minus pins and then there's two pins in between that aren't connected to anything that kind of act as a barrier and then you've got your IO pins as marked out here you know your mix signal pins your serial your control pins and your data pins so just returning briefly um, to these data pins these are all being driven now from the FPGA and there's a good reason for doing that because for example even though it looks like we have a, sa a standard serial type arrangement here with a serial out serial in serial clock and a serial select you could extend that down into these data pins so you can do serial as in SPI you can do DSPI and then if you start using these pins as well you can move to quad SPI and even octo SPI um, because it's all done through the FPGA so it depends really what your tiling tile wants or you can use these you know D0 through to D1 uh, D7 as anything you like as general purpose I open so it's quite flexible uh, and a slight improvement from where we were before so that's the tile in fact I call these micro tiles because they're slightly different from the old tile um, one of the things is the um, height difference I know this is three layers, but this is the height difference that we're talking about here. And again, the old tiles were not double that, probably another 50% on top. So you've got quite a narrow arrangement, which is nice, a nice little sandwich. Um, Laurie's asking, which of the pins go to the SDM32 well the only pins that go to the SDM32 on the regular micro tile is um, the mix signal pins okay and the interrupt the enable slash p enable and the RST and the I squared C. Everything else goes to the FPGA. So one one way of thinking about this here is uh, on here the the lower part here is FPGA and the upper part is the STM32. Yeah. So I squared C upwards is STM32. If that makes any sense. So there's more FPGA now than there was before. Does that answer your question? Um, what have I covered? I've done all of that. So anyhow, on, on this particular one, what we've got is we've got four of those regular micro tiles on the fifth micro tile I know it looks exactly the same at the moment I haven't indicated although I've got a note here D tile if you like replaces the MX pins with digital FPGA pins so in this case where we have mixed signals okay uh, marked on here these are replaced with FPGA digital pins um, the reason that you might want to do that is because you might need to connect to something that needs a few more pins, not many more. Let me roll off some examples. Okay. So a digital tile requires more digital pins and preferably they need to be the FPGA pins rather than the STM32 pins, which is how I'm implementing this particular uh, solution one obvious example say i want to do a vga connector 
Now, I might want to use more than eight pins. I know you can do it with eight pins, but you're severely limited on the color front when you do that. Yeah. So you might want to use eight bit color and then you want your horizontal and vertical sync. So in this case, I've got my eight bit color here and I've got three more pins to do sync and stuff. I can even use a CS pin as well if I need to for that because it's it's specific to this even though so si and sck are shared fpga pins between the micro tiles cs is individual in this case so i've actually got four extra fpga pins on a digital board that means i can go up to you know higher number of colors for example On a VGA connector so something else <coughs> excuse me something else that you um, might need more for say you're driving um, something like oh <coughs> excuse me for coughing I can't find my damn board where is it mm, this is a oh, is it? yeah Maybe you've got one of these. I've only got the PCB at the moment. Uh, I, I can't find one that I've got made up. So say you're doing like our seven segment display. With three digits. Now in order to drive that, uh, and I want to do some, uh, you know, a tile with these on. Um, I want to do, uh, we can talk about that in a sec. Let's come back around to that. Call it an FPGA 101 digital tile so in that case in order to drive these so each the way that you would drive these you'll, you'll know this sorry uh, each one of those digits is seven segments plus a dot to so eight segments so you need eight bits just to drive the segments then you need three controllers for the anodes or cathodes if it's common cathode to enable each digit so that you can go one, two, three, one, two, three, and scan between them so in that case, you'd need at least 11 digital IOs to do that. So again, more than the regular tile would allow you to do. And again, the problem that you used to have when you tried to do these for things like double PMODs and stuff is you don't need a whole second PMOD. You just need a few extra pins. Um, so again, on the digital front, these are covered um, because I've, I've got the extra pins. And in fact, you know for a seven segment I could go up I could do many more digits I could do effectively four digits if I wanted to um, so again that's another example uh, Laurie was saying yes that the digital VGA is a 12-bit color um, could I do 12-bit color when we eight nine ten now we could do 10-bit color Uh, the OV7670 needs 14 pins unless you configure it from the STM32 where it needs 12. So again, yes, the camera was an important one. And I'm already working on a digital tile that supports the um, parallel camera. Um, actually, um, all we need for the camera is eight data pins um, you need a pixel clock vertical clock and horizontal which you can use these top pins for um, and then you can use the CS pin as a clock pin if you like or yeah Probably use CS as a clock pin. If well, if it's one of the boards where you have the clock on board, then you don't need that. But if if you're doing it via an FPC cable, for example, uh, which is probably the simplest way of doing it, lowest cost way of doing it, you've got to put a scattering of other components on there to get the voltage that you want. 
So uh, Laurie's saying you need the OV seven six seven only needs fourteen pins. What are the other extra pins you're talking about? Are they just like things like reset and stuff? Because I've already got those covered with the control pins. And I need to get some more refreshments soon as well. Two I square pair pins for config. Yeah, I've got I squared C on the tile, that's not a problem. So yeah, th this is one of the other examples of where you need a few more pins. But you don't need two P double P mods, if you know what I mean. You, you, you know, it's, it's in the 12 pin area. So, there's quite a few others as well that need more pins to do that kind of thing. P clock and X clock. Yeah, I mentioned that. So um, on this configuration, what I was imagining, um, Laurie, let me just show you actually. Probably I'll come back to this. So if we look at the cam tile here, what we probably have is this arrangement. So we can do it live. Um, Let me just one sec. Let's just do the data lines first. So what I call CD. Let's start at zero here. Do we want uh, oh no it's the sync isn't it sync and finally the pixel clock like that and then power down will be enable hopefully like that let's just catch up with the comments configuring the camera from the stm32 will take more coordination currently i leave the power down and reset floating the p mod that i use yeah on here you can control them 
Um, in fact, so they're controlled effectively from Ian, and then we need STA and whatever as well. So put those in. Voila. So that that covers all of our bases. Um, then the only thing that we have to add is things like the supply stuff. So three volt three we've got. They're normally I forget VCC. Ooh. Ground. Why isn't that's strange. Uh, what have I done with the voltages on this? Was this for a one volt eight version? I'm trying to remember, there's several supplies. This needs to be like. I think it's about one volt five from memory. Should that be one volt eight? There's so I've got two volt five. Um, ah, hmm. oh, no, our logic is three volt. That's why it's because this was a um, I did a um, a one volt eight version for a specific example. Let me add in here. Uh, do -do. Confusing myself with the voltages. Put that in here. So there. That's right. So we've got three volt free. So I need the only thing I need to do is derive the um hold on. Ooh. I need to derive the two volt five. Um actually it's quite easy to derive that. Two volt five I can do with I've done this before. Mm. Give me one sec once I get this out. Excuse me while I just find a particular diode that I use for this purpose. For this very purpose. Hold on. Uh, oh. Use this one for a moment. I need to change this. So this can be achieved thus. This has a very specific one 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 <coughs> a very specific drop point eight. 
Um, the one volt five is a bit more tricky. I need to check whether that is one volt five. I'm just going from memory. And then there also needs to be a few more caps as well. I can have one of these. For example, out of it. There we go. There. And that's pretty much the entire thing that you need, apart from a few decouplers, maybe a couple more caps. I've forgotten what the one volt five is. There's a core voltage for the graphics, not the graphics, for the camera part. It needs, I'm sure it's one volt five. But I'll have to double check that. Um, Yeah, I need appropriate small um, audio. Can't remember the part number at the top of my head. Hold on. May have to change this anyhow. Right now, some things are difficult to get hold of, so maybe a case of just finding what's available. Something. No, not this one. Um, used one with black eyes originally, I think. In the early days, too many to choose from. Hmm. Leave me one second, just want to dig through this in the and out. What's that? So 23. LFE? LFE? No. Something like that, maybe. Let's just stick that there for the moment, just to remind me that probably not the right one and I may need to just um, check on availability anyhow Something like that, I guess. Anyhow.
kind of thing. So it's actually a fairly simple little setup, and then you can just connect via the FPC connector. Which is kind of cool. Size of these probably a bit big actually. So it's a simple enough thing to do. Um, I'd need to check whether this is the right um, connector. I don't know whether it's worth putting a dip connector on there. Uh, they have, what's the common one? It's like, um, it's a bit weird. Hold on, because of the number of pins is really a bit odd, unusual even. So you have, I think it's uh, male pins, and it's nine by two. Is it nine by two? Which one have you got, Lonnie? But I don't have surface mount version of these. This no, I don't think the nine by two. Yeah. Um. Uh. Is it nine by two? Yeah, it's really odd because that's not a standard connector size. Because you normally have a ten by two or seven by two are the most common ones. Um. Yeah. And that kind of looks like this then. Um have to think about carefully where you put that. What you probably want to do is do this kind of thing. Damn it. Um, hmm. I mean, you could do this sort of thing here, like that. And that would then accommodate both, you know, whether you have a have an FPC type or whether you have the um, um, the dual inline pit header pin, the 2.54 or 0.1 inch pitch I've got one somewhere hold on I've got one of those 
We've got one. See, if you look at these cameras on here, like the OpenMV one, if you was to take that off and look underneath, that's got an FPC type. Um, ooh. Where? Where would I have that? Possibly in here. Maybe. Maybe, baby. Oh, this is where all the books fall over and wreck a place. Hold on. I don't mind lesson yet. I really wish I knew where my other bookend went. I think I've lost it. Um... We've got all sorts in here. There we go. This is the same. Or is this a different one? Yeah. So that's a dip one that must be similar to yours, um, Nori, with the um, header on this side. But Then on the back, it's just got those kind of passive bits and bobs to get the extra voltages and decoupling and stuff. What does it have on the back of this one, actually? Let's have a quick look. It's got a few tantalum. Yeah, it's got a small regulator. Two small regulators, in fact, in this one. So that would just fit on top here the camera pointing up or you could use the FPC so this would sit over the FPC connector effectively over the board like that um, one other thing that just reminds me that you could possibly use this for um, the, a digital slot not this particular thing is you're driving something like this um, A little OLED type job. Um, this one supports parallel as well as SPI. So if you wanted to drive one of those little OLEDs in parallel or a TFT, again you need the extra pins that you don't get on the mix signal. Um, Mix signal tile. Get on the digital tile. There's another use case. Just put my bits back together here before I wreck the place. Yeah, oh, monkey, you can go back there. Look after my bits. Um, I've got to put it away now. I should have remembered what the pinout is. Do -do 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 -do. 
So that would be like, um, hold on. Um, So yeah, let me just do this. So pin one. And it goes, yeah, let me put these in now. Uh, let me just Doing um, and then oops. Um, so it goes SIOC, SIOD, so that's SCL. Tell me if I get this wrong, if it's the same as yours, um, Laurie, or anyone else that's got these. Um, VSync. Yeah. In fact, Name that I need. And href. Why does it call it href? I thought it was hsync. Don't you? I use the same as my naming for the moment. Um. So clock and then X clock and then we go through the data, don't we? So reverse order D seven D six. Uh, E five. Oh, 
et des seven. Pray. Seeing two. Seeing one. CD zero and then reset, I think. Um, yes. And power down, wouldn't it? Did I call it? Yeah. T W T N. Thus. Just have a look. Um, let's turn the no, I can't. It's a little bit all over the place, but there you go. So You don't have high enough control here. Typically difficult to route. Some of the things are a little bit awkward, but may need some adjustment with the DRC when I set it, which I haven't yet. But The data lines in that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um. That's ugly. Oh, my settings are on here. I haven't set the um DRC up properly yet. Then we need two layers for this, so Oh, what's that? Resync. Mistake here.
Well, these I may have to use wires for. Like this, for example. Oh. Fuck. This is annoying me. Why it defaults this is nobody. Um, no doubt. Oh, ugly, come on, why are you defaulting to these ugly buyers? Because I haven't done the DRC before I started this. So always do it first, it's a lot easier. Uh, and, um, what is this one here? V sync, H sync. There's a reasonable frequencies. Let's adjust this slightly. More we'll about that later. And is what about X clock? Which one is X clock? Is it this one? STA. SCL. Is X clock? Oh, it's that one. Yeah, I need to be careful with that one because it's going to be a high frequency one. I might need to be a bit more cautious. I'm not sure that I should be crossing that line. I want to steer clear of that when I can. Show as much room as possible. Well, that's that index. So SCL and ST to do. So that's going to go. Stop it. Right, why is that defaulting? 2.6. Let's change this. It should be round. And 
and then this one. This little number here. So the only thing you might worry about there is interference from these clock signals. We drop it down here a bit. Maybe you know, something like this. Something like that may need to make it a bit tidier. Let's go on here. How is that doing? Good. Hmm. Oh, that's annoying. Uh, okay. It's slightly different. Just shuffle things around a bit. Just give him a sec. Man, I'm going to need to. Shuffle this along a little. It's going to shuffle too. So let's 
I'm going to work exactly the cause. I need a finer Then I can shuffle those around a bit more on a finer level in a minute. Okay. I'm going to move this to the other side for the moment. Do all that in a sec. Uh -huh. This is a bit awkward. That's okay. Okay. Oh, is that my um, power down? Oh, okay. Get myself into a bit of trouble here. Have to do some squeezing a bit later. Oh, okay, I'm going to have to rearrange that slightly. I'll do that later. Just roughly trying to get it sorted first. I can go back and finesse after. What is worrying me slightly though is this clock.
Oh. So got some crossing going over here. Might need to shuffle some of these things around away from them because this is a high frequency signal or relatively speaking needs to run at like uh 24 megahertz i think x clock would you run yours at um nine or do you just rely on that happening on the board you are driving the x clock i presume Mm. It's slightly awkward. I guess the easiest way of doing this is just go like that. Damn it. Don't do that. Do this. And what have we got? STA. SCL. Voila, it's most of it done. Um, that's it. The going there. Uh, something like that, I guess. We've got some supply stuff that we've got to do. We need to get closer up. So yeah, it's not too complicated. The rest is fairly easy to do. save it where it is right i'm just going to take a break for a sec folks hold on bear with me i just need to go and get a refreshment use this as a convenient
Back again. Oh. Refreshment time. I need something to um, chew as well. An energy injection. On Friday night. Hmm. Right, let me catch up with the chat. Lori Griffiths says he runs these at 25 megahertz. That's the X lock input into the um, camera. I think 24 megahertz is what they normally recommend, but depends what your settings are. I'm not saying he derives that by dividing the PLL. He was using the PLL to create 100 megahertz for up the SD RAM. He divides it by four for the sync domain and the X clock. Cool. Anyhow, that's nearly done. We can finish that off. Um, I need to set up the DRC and stuff. Fine tune it and do the power. And I need to check that regulator as well. So let's just say where that is. So that's fairly easy. But as I say, this is a digital board. I'm thinking of some sort of marking to mark the digital, digital boards. You know, we have some sort of logo thing or something where you put, you know, can I do on Windows? I don't know how to get the um, alt keys. Mm. Use a D. Some sort of logo y thing, maybe. Um. Something like that, maybe. D for digital. We need to work on some sort of um, maybe logo y thing. It says microtile. And in fact,
Right. Let's see if that where it is for the moment. I need to give it a name as well. Right, back to where we were. So let's just remind ourselves. So that will be one of the tiles that will go here, the P type tiles. And we could even do something really obvious like Um, what's Laurie saying? Running my OV7670 VGA version <coughs> will be hard on this board as it really needs a digital tile for the camera and another for the VGA. Well, I thought you were driving um, your LCDs using SPI. Sorry. Um, I'm running out of I.O. on my Black Ice MX because I really want lots of switches and buttons for controlling the image processing and LEDs for diagnostics. Um, If you want lots of buttons, you could use one of those um, PS2 keyboard expansions. You know what I'm talking about. These are really popular nowadays. Um,
this kind of stuff. Hold on. There's lots of these little keyboard hacks you can get now. So there's lots of open sourcey like little add on keyboards. DIY mechanical keys. Some of them have LEDs in, some of them don't. And then you can talk to them, you know, quite simply. Um, I think these ones are is this USB. I don't know why. Oh, this is micro USB. So if you want lots of switches, there's one way to go. It's really common now for people doing this keyboard stuff. I think this must be a USB one. I don't know what they call them. DIY mini mini mechanical keyboards. This will be. PS2 one would be nice and easy to interface to. But all sorts of funky ones coming out that have things like um, encoder dials and stuff on them. Is that, is that USB? Oh, look at that. How funny. I think all of these are like USB ones. You want something slightly less com complicated, like I squared C or um, PS2. A lot of these are just um, USB, but a PS2 version would be nice. Then you've got loads of buttons, you see. That's all I'm thinking. There's all sorts you can do. Um, a lot of them are based around AVRs as well. Don't 
So they probably got I squared C on the board. All sorts you could do, but enough of that. So yeah, if you want more buttons, there's one way to go. Uh, particularly if you can get one that supports PS2. It's really easy to interface them. Um, or you could just use a terminal, of course. Why do you need so many switches? I mean, you could make it really difficult on yourself. Use a larger display that has a touch screen on it, and then do electronic buttons. And then you have your video on the side in a little window. And then the buttons that you touch, but they're a bit annoying. Touch, touch screens. Not my favourite. But yeah, building your own add on keyboards and stuff is all the rage right now. All the rage. Um, how are we doing for time? Yeah, I'm going to call it quits today shortly anyhow. So the other thing I was working on here that was annoying me earlier was bloody JTAG. I'll just go back to schematic. It's just doing my head in, it really was. <clears throat> I thought, um, I mean there is there are standard JTAG um, headers. Let me just show you all the schematic. Probably. Um, so importantly what I need to connect here are the SWD debug connectors for the STM32. This really winds me up the way I have to do it at the moment. But anyhow, I mean when I get to the amalgam stuff it's, I, I solve it on the board but I'm a bit limited here. But these are the pins that you're dealing with effectively. Um, what connector do you use? Well, you know, there are massive ones, the standard JTAG ones, but they're like 20 pins and stuff, a lot of them. So I was just going to use, and you can get a very small 10 pin one. I was just going to use, um, I'll come back to this actually, because this is very, um, Annoying actually. Let me just put one of these on just for the moment. Got to think how I want to connect this up. Something like that. Let's say. So, anyhow, one of the things I was looking at is the. Um, is these um, they got a bunch of these and I've got some available if people need them as well um, and basically it's got you know just a header pin it's, it's a bit ugly I don't really like it much I'm going off using these but these are great if you want to make cheap and dirty so I want to put the connector on so I figured, oh, well, why don't I wire it the same as in this end? Because that's going to be consistent, right? Is it how? <laughs> they're all different. If you go and look on like AliExpress or whatever, they're all bloody different pinouts. They're not consistent at all. There's several variations. So that's very annoying. And I've got two here myself. I've got one in a packet, one here. I've got a few of these spare if people need them. Let me know. But um, yeah, these two are completely different. Now, if I go and look for the new ones, new versions, they're different again. So, yeah, a bit frustrating. So I thought I'll go with the, um, like an ST Link or the Cortex 10 pin connector. It's commonly used, but I'm going to use a larger rather than a smaller one because it's just easier to hook onto. So in that case, SWDIO is pin two. Clock is 
for uh, let's do URL six. Reset turn. V ref is one, I think. I think that's like um, and then ground nine. Yeah. Oh. I don't have ground on there, okay. Uh -huh. Uh, what else do I need? I don't know if the others are connected to anything. So, three and five are ground as well. That's interesting. Just shove this up a bit. It's not making a lot of sense order wise. I'll sort that out a bit later. Three, five, Sims all ground two. What, what are these two used for? So one is an NC, and the other eight is. God, I don't know. I mean, eight TDI. I mean, I could use that for pilots, possibly. Um, Seven five. I don't know if I actually want to connect that. I'm just going to leave those two for a minute. Um, yeah, I mean, SWO isn't available on ice core because i'm using that pin for something else it's really useful to have I'll, I'll have it on the amalgam boards basically what it is is like um a tx out and what you can do in some environments is use that to print to to do your printfs but what you really want to do because it's in debug you you need to do like a simplification of printf like a like a debug output basically it has to be simpler than printf but that's what it's used for it's part of the hardware supported by arm but i don't expose that pin on ice storm so we can't use it directly but we need to put it in for completeness so what you can do is if you look at this circuit here that comes from either TX so I could use a serial port output or I could you know to do debug back 
or printf back or it's actually connected to the SCK pin on the STM32 that's used to connect to the mozzie but unfortunately that's connected to <clears throat> the FPGA to program it but you could use it after you program the FPGA for example if you weren't using the flash or talking to it via SPI so basically it's pretty much unusable on the um, black eyes but... but it won't be on amalgam it's really useful to have um, so yeah that was a bit annoying having to um, do that with the connectors and that'll probably I'll probably have that at the front. So if we switch to the uh, PCB layout, that's a connector here. And I'm using a um, polarized one. But this is a 0.1 header rather than the miniature 0.05. Maybe I should use the 0.05. Trouble is finding a right angle version of that. Right, that will do me for now. Any more questions, Laurie, before I disappear off? Because I'm pretty tired now. <clears throat> oh, and on the cheap ST link um, jobbies like this, they don't have an SWO, by the way, which is another reason why they're a bit shitty. They have an SWIM, which is used to program the 8 bit devices, but they do not have an SWO. You can go in and modify them. Look it up on the internet, on the interwebs. But if you've got a decent one, you, you, you can get it. So, you know, if you've got like a J Link or something, these do include the SWO. And I have been thinking about doing my own that supports that link on that. And that can also talk to the ECP5. That'd be cool. I mean, I do have like, a, um, you know, a, what you call it? like a lattice one. But I was thinking of doing one for... Um, Um, what's the latest one? I oh, my depth is half that. Yeah, I do have a design for doing a separate one, and I might do that for the amalgam stuff. So I can add some bits and pieces, some features in that would be um, useful and more compact. But anyhow, I'm going to call it a day. No questions, Laurie. Great. You're probably tired anyhow, mate. Um, I will, as usual, be down on Discord uh, or on the MyStorm forum. And we can continue the conversations over the weekend, etc. So thanks, guys and girls. Thank you, folks and I will see you all on Wednesday. Ciao.